you guys talked about it a little bit, the new record, Shine On, which is awesome, by the way. If you guys haven't checked it out yet, you definitely should. Um, but tell us a little bit about the, like, the writing and recording process behind that. Mm. Uh, I, I got it. You want to know this one? I got it. Something just came. Came with Go with it. Go with it. Go all, with all our records have been done with Milt at his studio and uh, at Rear Window Studios in Brookline. Uh, and it feels like home for us there. Uh, it's like a 20 foot high ceiling, right? Is it 18 feet? 10,000 pounds suspend, suspended by springs, so it moves when the sound hits it. And Milt, he had all these German scientists that came in and German <laughs> out. Um, so yeah, we've been we've been lucky enough to be able to all work together there. And in terms of the writing side of the question, um, the group works. We all write individually, we, and we write together. And then we pick the best ten or twelve songs. Maybe we'll record fifteen, and then pick ten or twelve for the record. And usually, we all end up picking each other's songs because yeah. you get too close to your own songs and yeah. you think that they suck, but they're. <laughs> Yeah. What do you guys think? Is it? Is it I mean, it's usually how it is. That was a nice summing up, I think. All right. We write all the time. I mean, all Dwight time. definitely writes more quantity and quality. Like he's always writing, and I definitely write a lot less. But I still, I get inspired. I try to keep that. I don't know. Top of the world's a hell of a tune. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 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 so you guys are based up in Vermont now, but you've played Boston a lot, obviously. What's your yeah. favorite venue to play in Boston, or around Boston? Oh, good question. I don't know. It's hard to pick a favorite because, like, for me, anyway, coming out of the blues clubs and, like, those little sort of divey bar scenes, there's, like, a magic that happens in those kinds of places that doesn't really happen in the bigger clubs. But, like, Sold Out Show at the Paradise or St. Clair is, like, kind of amazing. It has its own other kind of thing. The yeah. quantity of people. Um, Regatta Bar, we always have a nice the time. Regatta the Bar, crowds, everyone's right? listening and, like, pin drop silent. Yeah. Um, the old House of Blues had a oh. real thing. And the new House of Blues is great. The Somerville Theater. Somerville Theater. Was oh, the Hat Show was pretty amazing. That was good, too. That's an amazing yeah. venue. There's a lot. There's a lot. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Boston's yeah. got, like, such a cool music cool scene. Thing, yeah. And even though it's, like she was saying, the, the divey kind of blue, at least on the blues side and R&B side, there's not as many of those clubs. You know, Joe Cook, rest in peace, we used to go to the, the Cantab and, and mm -hmm. get to hear him and and Candy and Lee and the guys in his band, but uh, Cantab still has a thing. Happening. It does. It just, Sometimes it's a, a thing. It's, there that's yeah. <laughs> but but there's always something new coming from the Boston music scene, and as opposed to we, we lived in New York for years and we lived uh, in Burlington for two years, the Boston scene gives people a chance to have a residency, so your mm -hmm. band can play every Thursday or every Tuesday which is how we met. We each had residency right. in Boston. We lived here. And you suck less and over time. As <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It helps to like eliminate the suckage. Yeah, if you're in New York, there's like <laughs> all the clubs, or many of the clubs, there's like six, seven bills a night. Everybody gets an hour. And so there's not the chance to have a residency. Right. There's not a whole night to fall, like you said, fall on your feet. Or stand up or, for, or trip on yourself or whatever I just did here. That's <laughs> kind of the thing. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And one last question. Uh, you guys have obviously been at this for a while now, and a lot of it very DIY and on your own, and working with Milt, of course, too. But what kind of advice would you give to a band who's kind of just starting out, kind of like the very beginning level? Mm. Well, um, my advice would be to follow your heart, you know? Uh, that sounds but what I'm trying to say is that you have to not listen to necessarily what people are saying because everyone has a different idea of what it is to make it in the music industry. And um, nobody really knows what's going to work for you except you. And you have to say, I get a funny feeling working with this person. I'm going to give it a little time and step back. You know, or I don't know if I should do this material, even though the club owners are like, you know, get them dancing. We need more up stuff. And if you're like, that doesn't feel right. Follow it, even if it means you're not working at that club anymore. That's how you find your sound. You know what I mean? You can't try to be everything for everyone. And that was always something that was really important to me, even though it took me like, I think, 10 years to sort of carve that out. I think it's worth the time and effort. And uh, new bands, they have a lot of uh, struggle with sort of figuring out what it is that they want to do because everyone's really trying to sell so much. Because 
the industry has crumbled in a lot of ways. If people don't buy CDs, that used to be, at least we made twice as much money as we do now on CD sales alone. And um, so you have to find other ways. And for us, we've been fortunate. I think being heart-centered leads you to the right thing that works for you. And I think that that's really important. Yeah, and be visual and stay connected to your fans, whether that's with like videos or on Facebook. I mean, the, the upside of it, okay, so the, the, the CD, the vinyl, which we sell too, that's less of a piece now. But if you're connected with the fans and you're, because that's the only way it works, it's a conversation. That's why people, you know, anybody in Bob's comes to us or why we're here, it's like a, a conversation between people, you know. Um, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought. Be but honest. Be, yeah, be connected with your, your fan base and, and love it enough to be willing to do all, wear all the different hats, you know, it, until you get the right team of people that will book you and manage you and do it the right way. Don't just jump, necessarily jump on the right, on the first thing that comes down. Wait for the right thing and love it enough to be patient and, and stay in it. Um, but there's more touring bands now than there's ever been in the music business. So if you can stay connected to your fans and be willing to get out there and work maybe for a little bit less at first and build it, there's now more opportunity than ever to be, to be out there uh, and, and be working and get new fans. And be grateful and kind. Every day, because it's a short, you don't know how much time you get in life. We were in like, uh, we were in the Yale, went to the Yale graveyard last night, uh, yesterday, in the afternoon, last night would have been weird, but uh, it was, it was <laughs> it's beautiful, it's one of the oldest, oldest graveyards, and Harvard has it now, one too. Uh, and it just reminded us, you know, we're looking at all this beautiful architecture and all this, these kinds of like, all these little lives, you know, everybody had their little shot. So do what the hell you want to do with your life, you know, seriously, because you only get so much time. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs>